Hello my friends, welcome back to another Cocoa Flow with a Twist. If you haven't tried a Cocoa class before, it is a style of class I've come up with, which is pretty much just like drinking a hot chocolate next to the fire, which is literally what's happening right now. Uh, but it's supposed to be really slow and sweet and smooth and stretchy, quite close to the ground. And in particular, we're focusing on twisting in this one as well as a little bit of hip opening too. And this is a short form version of a longer 60 minute class that we have in our Patreon account. So if you loved this class and wanted to explore it in a little bit more depth and wanted to see some longer classes, I'll link that down for you down below for you to check out. Okay, we're gonna get started on our bellies today. So when you're ready, let's roll down on to your belly and we'll just start in our Sphinx pose. So elbows underneath the shoulders, hands out in front about parallel with each other. And there isn't any need for this to be active. You could very much make this really heavy and soft. You could drop the head down and let the shoulders relax a little bit. You could even start with the head closer to the ground, maybe even on the ground. If you felt like a little bit more activeness today, you could press the hands into the ground, lifting the chest up a little higher, engaging through the glutes, squeezing the shoulders back, and this is just gonna open the heart a little bit more. And tuning into the breath, taking a deep breath in through the nose. And a deep breath out through the nose. And letting the eyelids soften down if they haven't already. Unclenching any teeth that are stuck together. Relaxing the lips, relaxing the mouth. And these classes are intended to be really nourishing. So you might like to ask yourself, what do I need most in this practice today? And with that, you might like to set an intention, maybe one word or a quality or a value, something that you'd like to bring in to cultivate. Let's go one more breath here. And then just starting to roll down onto your belly. Take the right hand out to the side, left hand by the rib, left toes turn up. Take a deep breath in through the nose. As we exhale, let's open the chest to the left. Coming into this big kind of stretch for the chest, a little bit of a twist through the spine. And if it felt accessible to you, see if you can walk your left foot a little closer to your thigh, closer inwards. And maybe the left hand even presses the leg out slightly. So it's coming on top of the leg, just encouraging the knee to drop out, bringing a little bit more external rotation through the hip joint. This can bring a lot of sensation, so always coming back to the breath. Let's go one more breath here. Coming back through center, let's swap it out to the other side. So left hand reaches out, right hand by the ribs, right toes, turn up, take a deep breath in. And then as we exhale, opening the chest to the right this time, right foot steps behind the left thigh. Maybe you say here, you could try walk the foot a little bit closer to the leg and then see if the right knee can drop out a little bit more. Right hand could stay on the ground for support or you could maybe rest it along the leg, gently bringing some weight to press the right knee out. Mm 
Just taking one more breath here. Rolling yourself back through center. Bring the hands by the ribs. Push up onto your knees. And then we're just going to simply slide the knees over to the right. We're going to set up in a deer pose, which is basically with both knees bent, kind of like two triangles here. Left knee is forward and right knee is back a little bit. I'm going to turn towards our left knee, take a deep breath in. As we exhale, let's fold forward. Elbow stay down on the ground. Maybe the hands are on the ground. I'm just letting your upper body drop down against the front thigh. And just walk yourself back. We're going to lift up to the other side. So breathe in with or without the help of the hands. Draw the knees to the right. And then as you exhale, folding over that way. So you might feel sensation within kind of the right hip here, the glute, maybe the left adductor, depending on how you're feeling today, maybe the spine, the back. Walk your hands back through center, breathe in, lift the knees up, turn them to the left, exhale to hold. This time we're going to, a couple of different options, you're going to slide your right knee on top of the left and then just simply twist to the left here. Right hand comes around the outside of the left thigh and you're turning your left shoulder back. Now if you felt like a little bit more of a hip opening variation, you're just going to kind of cradle your left um, ankle, left shin, and then see if your left foot can come up onto the hip crease. Now this is quite early on in our practice together, so it might not quite happen yet. And then you'll do the same thing, twisting to the left. If you're feeling pretty open already, left hand could try and come around, holding onto the left big toe. Just coming back through center, we'll swap it out to the other side. So dropping the knees over to the right. Okay, this time maybe the left knee slides on top of the right as we twist to the side. Or if you felt like a little bit more, see if you can cradle the right ankle. Just shift it around a little bit. And then it kind of comes up as high as you can on the hip crease. This one's a little bit more challenging for me. When you're ready, take a deep breath and lift up tall. As you exhale, let's twist to the right. Now, if you feel any discomfort within kind of the right knee or hip or anywhere else, it might be an indication you've gone a bit too far. So just unwind slightly. Keep sliding the shoulder blades down the back, especially the left one. Let's go one more breath. And then releasing the twist, coming back through center. Roll to the front again. Your left leg is gonna extend out long. Knee might be a little bit more bent, it might be a little bit long, longer. I encourage you to have a play. You're kind of almost sitting up for like a pigeon pose. You're gonna shift your hips, kind of turning them around ever so slightly. Elbows come onto the ground, just like we did in the Sphinx pose. So we've got a little bit of a twist through the spine. We've got a bit of a stretch through the left hip as well. And again, just play with maybe the left foot's out a little bit more. Maybe it's a little bit more bent. I find a little bit more bent, a bit more comfortable. Let's keep threading that intention through whatever word or quality we have chosen for ourselves in today's practice. 
let's aim to keep coming back to it. Let's go one more breath. And then maybe you stay down the elbows if you wanted to explore coming up onto the hands just for a moment. A little bit of a back bend here and a squeeze in the shoulder back, shoulders back and you're thinking about squaring the shoulders to the front. And then when you're ready, come back through center, we're gonna turn to the back. Exactly the same way to sit up. Right leg comes out to the side a little bit. Right knee might be longer, might be more bent. Left leg might be long here. And then walking elbows to the ground, just like Sphinx pose. And you um, want, want to think about ever so subtly bringing the left hip towards the ground a bit more. That's how we're going to get a slightly deeper stretch in our right hip. Maybe you let the head hang heavy here. You can even stack wrists, bring the forehead down. Let's go one more breath. And then just like we did before, walking up to your hands. This time facing the back. You might be on fingertips here to help get a little bit more height. Slide the shoulder blades down the spine. just coming back to the front this time we're going to keep both knees bent push the left hand down into the ground and then lift your hips up high kind of finding a modified wild thing variation here but both knees are on the ground engage the glutes lift your hips up a little bit of a twist through the spine here opening through the front body and then lower your hips down. Let's try the other side, dropping the knees over to the right. Breathe in as you lift your hips up. Exhale to hold. Engaging glutes, feeling all the beautiful length down the front of the body and the hips. Coming back through center. Find your way into a Sukhasana. You could be facing the side of the mat, maybe the front of the mat. Easy pose. Now you can, whatever foot you've landed in in front, can you swap it over? Just to change things up. Take a deep breath in, lift up really tall. As we exhale, let's twist to the left. Maybe it's the back of the hand coming around the side of the thigh. Maybe it's the front of the hand. Just keep rolling the right shoulder back. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale to twist to the other side. Inhale, come back through center. Lift up really tall. As we exhale, let's fold forward. Again, maybe hands down, maybe elbows down. And thanking yourself for turning up to this practice today. And even though it's been a short time, we can still make these moments really beautiful and intentional as long as we allow ourselves to turn it inwards. And then walking yourself back, take a deep breath in, lift up really tall. Exhale, close down the eyes. And just holding here in this final moment of silence together.
just bringing your focus back to the breath. Opening your eyes. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. I love these slower practices. Pretty mellow, pretty chill, and a great way to kind of reconnect and to slow down and to soften into the moment. Let me know how you found it. Remember, if you felt like a longer class, we do have the one on Patreon. It's just down here. Otherwise, I'll see you again next time. Mm-hmm.